The following is an overview of Apple Bonjour services. The protocol was designed to be used for zero configuration service discovery on Apple devices. In other words, using Bonjour in your home network makes finding services like printers, Apple TVs, and such easy. Bonjour is not an enterprise protocol. The engineers who wrote the protocol designed it in such a way that the packets are sent with a DTL value of 1, meaning whenever the packets reach the gateway, they die. I will show a successful MDNS service discovery and response between two Apple devices, an iPod Touch running iOS 613 and an Apple TV. I connect the iPod Touch to my MacBook Air via USB and locate the UUID of the device in my system. There is no way to capture packets natively on an iOS device. In order to do this, I had to download Xcode, which is the Apple Development Toolkit. Xcode includes the Remote Virtual Interface Control Tool, or RVICTL, which starts and stops a remote packet capture instance on any attached mobile devices. Note that you need Xcode 5, which requires at least a mountain lion, in order to make this work with iOS 7 devices. There is also a way to do this on Windows. So after locating the UUID of the iPod, I run the RVICTL tool with the dash S switch to start the virtual interface. I then launch Wireshark using the created virtual interface. Let's look at the capture. On the iPod, I will now launch AirPlay Discovery and generate some MDNS traffic. We should see requests from the iPod as well as responses from the Apple TV. Apple MDNS Discovery uses UDP port 5353 and the multicast address 224.0.0.251. Let's create a filter for this specific traffic to reduce the cluttered output. See the query sent from the iPod. Notice it is sending to the multicast address 224.0.0.251. Again, Apple will always use this multicast group address. Looking at the response from the Apple TV, Wireshark has indicated that the TTL is low and unexpected. Apple devices mark the TTL for these packets at 1, which means that when they reach the gateway, they will be marked as dead and dropped. Further examination of the response packet from the Apple TV reveals the services which are offered. In this example, we can see airplay.tcp.local is offered, the device's info itself, which is named in this case user0, and also the raop.tcp.local. Let's take a look at how this service works in conjunction with the Cisco WLC. First, the Cisco WLC is listening for MDNS service offerings. In this case, it's from the Apple TV, and the Apple TV is going to be offering AirPlay. So the offer goes in, the Cisco WLC puts that into its uh, MDNS uh, service provider database. So this is going to keep track of all your services, all the Apple TVs, all your print servers, um, all your iTunes databases, anything like that. So once that database is populated, your iOS device then sends the, uh, the MDNS query to the multicast address which we observed in the previous packet capture. So the WLC receives that query and sends the response from the WLC back to the iOS device of all the devices that are in the MDNS service database. So this query actually doesn't 
come from the Apple TVs or from the actual service providers. It's relayed from the wireless controller itself. There are a couple ways to see the active databases of Bonjour service providers in the WLC. Let's first take a look at the GUI. Under the MDNS tab, you'll see all of the devices that respond to MDNS queries in the controller. The second place we can see these MDNS services is from the command line. Let's see if I can remember my password. Apparently not. Hmm, maybe the third time's the charm? Once finally logged in, the show MDNS service summary command will show you the list of all services as well as the quantity of service providers for that service. Notice the tab LSS. The yes in this field indicates that location specific services is enabled. LSS allows MDNS query responses to be sent only from those service providers in the database who are connected to the same AP as the querying client or a neighboring AP.